This episode, we're back with colorist K. Michael Russell for the second part of his Creators Edition. This time, we're looking at a page from Postal 15, a Top Cow book written by Brian Hill with line art by Isaac Goodhart, letters by Troy Pateri, and colors, of course, by K. Michael Russell. We'll delve a little into his process starting a new book, dealing with light and lighting the scenes, and even a little bit on brush types if you're really into that sort of thing. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, this time with K. Michael Russell, and we're going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. You've got these two locations with two different characters having a conversation, and they've obviously got very, very strikingly different colours to attach to them. From when you get this page, is that a main concept? Are you thinking a lot about character when you're starting to try and colour these things? Yeah, I mean, it really depends on the page and the situation. Um, the With this one, it was more of, you know, obviously, they're on having an, a, this, a heated discussion here yeah. and a very opposite sides of, of an argument or a conversation, so... You know, going with you know, Bailey, totally opposite size of the color wheel here, which is, is all of your uh, complementary colors. Uh, if all else fails when you're coloring, go complementary. It's probably going to work. Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, that's really all I was thinking is I want two colors that you know work well together on the page, but that are also very very different um, from each other. Um, and the, the other thing that is really noticeable about this page, the way that you're using uh, bright spots. Your eye is naturally drawn to the brightest part of the image. That's how it tends to work. The first panel, you've got this like, little smudge of yellow sky right above right. the character's head. And then mm -hmm. when we go down to the second panel, which I found particularly interesting, is the far left, you've got the, the lamp, which is quite bright. Your, my eye naturally goes straight to the far left of that panel towards where that lamp is and then back across right. I, I was kind of thinking in terms of, again, if we've popped into this scene, we're establishing where this character is. You know, there's a reason that Isaac drew this big expanse of a room to me you know so it was sort of like i, I think of it as kind of a slow pan uh, if, if this yeah, was yeah. A, a movie set it's like let's start over here and that's kind of what i was thinking was just um you know make sure that that little bit of yellow and that little bit of light on him is is uh there's actually more contrast there than there is on the left side of the panel and the other thing too is uh i, I think just the position of the characters and this is as much on isaac the artist as as me but uh, the uh, Mark, the the postal lead character, is is definitely in control of this conversation, um, mm -hmm. and he has the upper hand in this conversation. If, so I, I think it was intentional on his part that that first panel, Mark is he's right there, basically in the middle of the panel, he's standing up very high and very strong, and uh, and then in that second panel, our our guy is kind of small in the panel. You know, he's mm -hmm. kind of off to the side. You know, and. I, don't know, I might be putting ideas in Isaac's head too, but um, but I, I I think that's all intentional. We were just briefly talking anyway before we started about that kind of uh, idea of harsh lighting, and not mm -hmm. everything needs to be kind of like soft and, and with a you know with a gradient. And mm -hmm. there's a really nice example of that in the uh, fourth panel when you've got the the chap with the blue panel and that that very heavy uh, yellow light obviously coming from the lamp. So uh, what uh, what what are your considerations when you go into trying to figure out like how to light a scene or how to to color something with lighting? It really depends on it depends on the scene and it depends on the emotion of the story at that point. I mean, and, for, and I'm thinking here. I mean, obviously this guy is highly upset, so I'm, <laughs> yeah. it's, you know it's it's higher contrast. It, the lighting's a little bit sharper. Whereas you know if if he was standing at a water cooler, um, you know, discussing the football game with his buddy. <laughs> You know, I'm not gonna light that the same way. You know, I'm, I'm, it's gonna be softer. It's gonna be, you know, for us, it lights in the office or whatever it is. You know, so. Um, but the um, uh, that that all sort of factors in. Um, you know, uh, so I, I I tend to think in terms of an action as as you know higher contrast and just starker and and those sort of things and uh, kind of start there and build from it. On that panel, if we just looking at that panel a little bit more, because you, you can see the um, brush stroke effect, I guess, of the mm -hmm. of the tool that you're using in Photoshop. Would you have sort of one tool that you're coloring a book in, or is it or is each page made up of like a bunch of different types of brush types? No, I I don't. I don't go th through like tons of brushes usually. I mean, I, most of my brushes are either soft, round, simple brushes that they're really not aren't isn't isn't much to, mm -hmm. um, or uh, that's actually uh, one of uh, it's Kyle Webster's uh, brush sets if, if you're familiar with Kyle, but but he, he does uh, natural media brushes for Photoshop basically that emulate you know certain effects, watercolors or chalk or pastel and those sort of things. So it, it just sort of depends. Um, I'll, I'll mix it up a little bit, but I, I tend to have really two or three main brushes that I use most of the time and um, 
keep it simple. Uh, the, the less that I have to choose as far as brushes <laughs> go, the, the faster I can get a page done. But every now and then there'll be like a something unique or something and I'll go get a, you know, a, a slightly different brush than what I would usually use or something. But I tend to try to keep it simple. So you get the, you get the new book, you get your script. What's like your first step? Uh, well, first step, we want to get technical is to send it to my flatter first <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, and get that part back. But um, but no, uh, as far as how the book's going to be colored, how it's going to look, um, the first thing I will usually do is just kind of skim through the book, just look at all the pages and see kind of what I'm going to be dealing with and, and go through the script and, and read it. I, I know colorists that will lay out kind of an entire book in advance. Like they'll just kind of thumbnail out, you know, uh, how they want things to go. And I've never really let it out go quite that far. You know, like I'll, I'll usually just get like the first scene or two and, and kind of that's where I'm going to start. Um, but, you know, you could probably ask 10 colorists and get 10 different answers. <laughs> but, uh, but for me, uh, I tend to just think in terms of scenes and I'll try to work on one scene at a time, whether it's you know, whether it's two pages or five pages or whatever, I'll kind of try to, uh, it's easier to keep things consistent um, than to, you know, finish scene, you know, page one, and then go to page two and try to duplicate that, you know. Um, instead, I'll sort of, you know, have both pages open or two or three pages open and kind of, you know, work on it all uh, across the way. So it kind of, it, it makes it easier to keep things consistent without having to go back and well, what color was I using here? What <laughs> technique did I do exactly, you know, so. So when you're working on a new book, is it that you'll get a kind of the script all in one go and then the page all in one go or do you get a page yeah. at a time or? No, you, it, it varies a lot depending on the project. Um, for, for most books, you're getting like a full issue at a time or half an issue at a time or something. Mm -hmm. um, or if it's on a, if the deadline's tight, they might just send pages as they're coming. You know, it just kind of depends on on the project. But um, for for new projects, that's always uh, a bit uh, nerve wracking, <laughs> especially for me with this book. You know, this book was colored by a different colorist for the first twelve issues, and I, I came in with number thirteen. Yeah, and so I'm coming into an established. Uh, creative team you know that uh that is it's already used to working together and then they kind of know what they're looking for so that was i was a little nervous at first but after the first couple of pages uh, you know and, and they were very nice about basically saying just do you just do what you want to do here we, mm -hmm. we trust you we like what you do let's see what you what's your first thought on this instead of you know, dictating, we want this and this and this and this and this, because I've done that before. It's no fun, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, and so they, they were awesome about basically just kind of letting me try something and, 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 and they loved it right off the top. So. And that about wraps up the second part nicely. We're going to be chatting more with Kurt in some future episodes too, including next time his work on Glitter Bomb. Thanks for watching. I'm able to keep producing Strip Panel Naked thanks to the amazing support of people through Patreon. As a support, you get access to brand new content every single week, and there's a year's worth of stuff in there to dive into already. For more comics talk and analysis, you can find me on Twitter at HassanOE, and finally hit subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest episodes, and we'll see you next time.